Okay, after I typed this lesson up, what is XML and WSDL, I decided to create a quick little video to explain um, because it's deadly simple. So XML is just the layout of the data. So what I did to explain this, which I think is hopefully a simple way of doing it, let's look at a simple XML spreadsheet that I just created. So here's a spreadsheet that I created in using Excel with uh, three columns, first name, surname, and age. And I put in myself and my four kids. So you can see that I've put some coloring in here. This is just to show the differences in the file. So when you save an Excel spreadsheet, it saves all kind of data with the Excel spreadsheet. So it'll be this would be called simple spreadsheet dot XLSX, the except the Microsoft Excel layout. So if I just have a look at this and I'm going to open it with Notepad so that you can see it in all of its glory. Uh, in fact, here it is. Let me copy this over to the other screen. This is what this file looks like when I look at the file contents. Yeah. All kinds of information, blah, 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 completely unreadable to us humans because all of this information that's stored here is the Excel definition saying this row is this color is blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, if I just save this Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to save it as, let me save it as um, uh, a CSV. I'm sure you're all familiar with CSVs, comma separated files. I'll save it as a really simple MS-DOS CSV. Save. Mm. So I've now saved this as a CSV. I'm going to close Excel and open the CSV. So if, here's the CSV, simple spreadsheet, Microsoft Excel, comma separate value. If I open this with Excel, Excel interprets what's going on. CSVs don't have any of the um, layouts that we had in Excel. It's just data. So what you can see is, if I zoom in on this, it's really simplified. It's got rid of all the colors, the fonts, all that stuff I was playing around with. It just shows the data. There are still three columns. The column head is still there, and the data itself is still here. Now let's have a look at the, look, the layout of the actual file itself. And again, if I just do that with a notepad, well, wow. you can see it's much, much simpler than the old spreadsheet layout. Here's the old spreadsheet layout with all that stuff defining what it looks and feels like. But CSV just says, right, here's a column, comma, here's another column, comma, here's another column. So we can see the data, but it's super, super simple. Now, XML is kind of just a different way of looking at CSV data. It's really not complicated. I took this CSV spreadsheet, um, just ran it through an XML converter, and uh, this is the exact same spreadsheet in XML. So if I open this with an X with the same notepad, you can see that what it's done is it's taken this data, first name, surname, age, and the XML is just saying, right, line one is saying, this is the version of XML that I am. And then it says, right, we're starting a record block. XML layout is just like HTML in that any section starts and ends with a slash. So here is the start of a record and here is the slash record the end of that record and the payload is the row so this is saying here's a row it has three columns a b and c containing first surname and age and here's the next record by me double clicking on each of these records this is just the editor i use notepad plus plus it knows xml which is why it's color coding and changing the layout on the screen here but we can see that we've got records, we can see we've got one, two, three, all the same data, and right at the end, it closes the block off. And Notepad++ is drawing these nice little loops around to show me what the data is on the screen. That's XML in a nutshell. So XML defines the data that we've got in our payload of the web service. So if you talk to a web service and you ask for the weather, the XML that's returned back to you would have this layout, but it would contain weather information, maybe city name and the city or state name and the state or country and the country and temperature. It might say temperature type Celsius or Fahrenheit, but the layout would be the same. So XML, deadly simple. Now, let me pull up an example of a WSDL. Okay, here's a nice example over on Tutorials Point. I just Googled it. 
Um, here's a WSDL. Now look, if we look at these details here, da -da 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 -da, but that looks just like XML, I can hear you say. And it is, it's, it's written in XML. The WSDL is written in XML. But what you can see here is it's not talking about the data that we have encapsulated in our web service. It doesn't care about what we are sending backwards and forwards. What the WSDL cares about is who we're talking to and how we're talking to it. So the WSDL is purely defining the web service, the attributes of the web service. So for ex in this example here, <coughs> excuse me, you can see that it has a name for the web service, that it has an HTTP address for the web service. Um, it has some SOAP details. It says things like this is the input parameter, this is the output parameter, this is the port type that we're using, and this is the binding information. So think about the WSDL being the address of the web service that you're talking to and lots of other information all written in XML. And the payload of the web service is the data that you are um, getting back from the web service when you request something from it. It's really that simple. So later on, further on in the course, I'm going to record a video. We'll actually set up a web server and we'll write some simple RPG code to both consumer web service. So the RPG program will talk to a web service on the net and get some XML back. And we'll also write another RPG program which will operate as a web service on a web server running on the IBM I system. So then from my browser, I can make a request to that web service and we can see the payload coming back. Um, in fact, the example here, I wonder if I can actually take the address for this hello service WSDL and paste it direct into my browser. What do I get? <laughs> and I get nothing. Or is this because, oh, no, I don't want to install apps. Um, okay. Fail for them. But, uh, We'll do this later on and I'll show you some good examples. I hope that explains XML and WSDLs. It's really simple. Don't be confused. I know all the jargon when you're new to web services can seem very confusing. But I'll hold your hand every step of the way. Right, let's uh, continue on.